During World War II, they flew over 60 million miles in a two-year period, delivered over 12,000 aircraft, and piloted 78 different types of planes. 38 of them gave their lives for their country. They broke through barriers and shattered stereotypes. They were the women Air Force service pilots who served their country delivering military aircraft to bases all over the U.S., fulfilling a critical need in a shortage of qualified pilots to do so. The first class of 23 graduated on April 24, 1943 in Houston, Texas. The second class moved from Houston, Texas and finished their training just in time to be the first graduating class in Sweetwater, Texas on May 28, 1943 the only all-female airbase in U.S. history. Over 25,000 women applied to join the WASP. Only 1,830 were accepted. Every WASP member had their pilot's license. They were trained to fly the Army way by the U.S. Army Air Forces at Avenger Field in Sweetwater, Texas. Father was Rigdon Edwards, who was a primary flight instructor for the WASP. A lot of his friends really gave him a lot of flack about teaching women to fly. And he said, well, I had four sisters, I had three daughters, and I've been around women all my life. He was very impressed that they were very good pilots. December the 7th, Pearl Harbor Day, 1943. I got my orders to go to uh, Sweetwater. And in that instant, my love of flying took second place. I realized I loved my country more and I was determined to make a go of it. After training, the WASP were stationed at over 100 air bases across the U.S., assuming flight-related missions and relieving male pilots for combat duty. They flew operational flights from aircraft factories to ports of embarkation and military training bases. Exceptional, a really exceptional group of women. They flew B-17s, B-24s, this is a great, group of women who stepped up, brought their skills to the fight. I joined the WASP in 1944. We hoped we were doing something for the war effort, and I towed targets mainly. Elaine Danforth Harmon was my grandmother, and she was a member of the Women Air Force Service pilots during World War II. She flew a BT-13 and several others, and she trained male pilots in a BT-13. The WASP did not qualify for military benefits. Attempts by Jacqueline Cochran and General Hap Arnold to militarize the WASP failed by a narrow margin in Congress on June 21, 1944. On December 20, 1944, the WASP were disbanded, and their records were classified and sealed for 35 years. In 1975, under the leadership of Barry Goldwater, Colonel Bruce Arnold with a group of WASP members a Battle of Congress took place with their goal to have the WASP officially recognized as veterans of World War II. Honorable discharge certificates were issued to former WASP members in 1979. In 1984, each WASP was awarded the World War II Victory Medal. In 2009, the WASP were awarded the Congressional Gold Medal by President Obama and the U.S. Congress. On May 10, 2010, 300 WASP members came to the U.S. Capitol to accept the award. The women Air Force service pilots deserves far more credit than it's ever received. My grandmother passed away in April 2015, and her last request was to be buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Unfortunately, when our family applied to have her interned there, the Army denied our request. So I launched a campaign with my family to bring attention to the issue and try to amend the law from 1977. Congresswoman Martha McSally stepped forward to write this legislation to amend the law. And the bill was signed by the president about 19 weeks after Martha McSally introduced it. So we reapplied at Arlington National Cemetery and my grandmother was interned at Arlington on September 7, 2016. for their courageous military service in World War II for America. The NBAA is proud to present the Meritorious Service Award to the women Air Force Service Pilots. 
Congratulations!